What is going on to everyone may be watching this and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about my opinion on who I think has the ability to come out of the West. By no means am I an NBA professional, do I know everything, I just have been watching basketball for a lot of years and I've seen a lot of tendencies that happen when the playoffs come around. I don't believe seeding means anything anymore. We saw a few years back, the Utah Jazz were a one seed, they get bounced in the second round, absolutely smoked. Last year the Heat are a 9 or a 10, they make it to the finals. It doesn't matter anymore, there's more things that come into play. I'm going to be using my own criteria. Offense and defense rating, star power, bench unit, chemistry, and experience. I'm not going to go through every single team in the West and check things off. It's going to be more generalized and spoken into. I'm also just going to be using the top 10 teams in the West right now. I'm not going to be using the Spurs, the Trailblazers, the Grizzlies, the Jazz, or the Rockets. Actually, I will use the Rockets because they're only a half game back, but they're going to be really quick. So before we start, if you can leave a like and subscribe, that would mean a lot. I'm going to be doing a video once a week. And also during the video, if you find that I'm batshit crazy or you don't agree with something or you do agree with something, be sure to leave a comment. So let's get into it. So we're going to be using the Nuggets as the team to beat because they are defending champs. They are in first place. I believe this is the best team in the NBA. So we are going to compare back to them probably a few times. So let's start with the Rockets. So off the bat, the Rockets have the 19th best defense and the 26th best offense. You know, they've shown good flashes this year, but we could all be realistic here. They aren't, if they do make the playoffs, if they make the play and they're not really a threat to anyone. They don't have the star power. I still think they need to work on the chemistry. I think they're in the right direction, but they just don't count. Next team up is the Golden State Warriors. Listen, we all could agree that you can never count the Warriors out, but this year they have the 18th ranked defense and the 11th ranked offense. They have the star power, they have chemistry, and they have experience. They have all these things, but we've been watching them all year. We don't know what's going on with Wiggins. They're starting Draymond at center. They have older players, Steph, Clay, Draymond, Looney, and then they have younger players. They don't really have these middling guys that you need, the glue guys, for a championship team. There's a very... It's very um, split. You got the older players and you got younger players. I don't think that they're a team to compete for the West, to be honest. I think there's a lot better teams this year. But the thing is, you can never count the Warriors out. But in my opinion, not going to make a run this year. Coming out of the nine seed right now, we got the Lakers, who just picked up a huge W last night on the back of Austin Reeves, no LeBron. Similar to the Warriors, could you count LeBron James out ever? No. You really can't. Defensively, this team is the 15th ranked team, and offensively, they're the 16th ranked team. I mean, that is the definition of mid, but we know what they think. At this point in LeBron's career, he does not care what seed he is. All he needs to do is make it to the playoffs. He can compete with anybody as long as he has Anthony Davis on his side. So them being right in the middle is very interesting, actually, because... They don't need to go super hard during the regular season on offense. They don't need to go super hard defensively during the regular season because once that once that page turns and we're in the playoffs, they're going to turn up. We've seen LeBron coasting for his whole entire career. He knows exactly what he's doing. They're right in the middle offensively and defensively. They have experience. They don't really have a bench, and their shooting is sus. If LeBron's one of your best shooters, that's a problem. Granted, I'm not taking anything away from him. He's having a great shooting year. But if he's one of your best shooters, that's an issue. I think the chemistry is good, similar to their offensive and defensive rating. It's good. I don't think it's anything crazy. This is a typical LeBron team. I'm going to pound the ball. I'm going to look for the mismatch and hit the open three in the corner if you're open. Last year, they surprised us with a similar team making to the Western Conference Finals, but alluding to the Denver Nuggets, they stand no chance. There's just not enough. Jared Vanderbilt, great defender, but he can't shoot. Torian Prince is a streaky shooter, but his defense is eh. Like I said, I wouldn't be surprised if the Lakers make it. Did I just click something? The West is just way too stacked, and I think there's just better teams. Next up is the Phoenix Suns, and this team's very, very interesting. Looking over here, they have the ninth best offense, and they have the 11th best defense. That defensive rating is actually really shocking to me. When you look at this team, it's a lot of offensive players, but then they have that defensive-minded coach, Frank Vogel, so that probably explains that reasoning. I'm actually really shocked to read that, but let's get down to it. The whole entire year, you know, out of their big three, someone's kind of been injured, you know, Bradley Beal missed a bunch of games. Uh, Booker missed a bunch of games. KD always misses some games. They're very great individual players. I just worry about 
the chemistry. I worry about the game plan. Yes, the regular season is completely different from the playoffs. I don't think this ISO basketball, this quick hit, pull-up mid-range basketball that Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, and Bradley Beal play aren't isn't the way that they're going to win a championship. I think they are a wild card, though. I'm not going to take them out. I actually could think they can make this Western Conference, but it has to be a perfect schedule for them. And they have to verse the correct teams to make this run. Like, if they get the the Nuggets in the second round, or if they get the Clippers in the second round, or if they get even the Pelicans in the second round, I don't know if they're if they can really get past these teams. But if they get matched up with a team like the Mavericks, the Lakers, the Kings, these are teams that I could see them getting through. I feel like once the playoffs come around, there's going to be similar shit that's happened with all Kevin Durant teams. You know, someone's going to miss a game or two. Bradley Beal, Baxorn is going to miss game two of the first round. Like, it's just, I just feel like this is the direction of this team. So my final answer is I could see them in the Western Conference, but it needs to be a perfect storm. Next is the Sacramento Kings. Surprisingly, they have the 11th best defense and around the 13th and 14th best offense. You look at this team and you really think the offense is better than the defense, but from a rating perspective, it's actually the opposite, even though they're very similar. I'm not high on this team at all, and it's not that I'm a hater. I think Sabonis is a great player. I think De'Aaron Fox is a great player. I think they have some good pieces with Malik Monk and Keegan Murray when he's hot. But I just don't think this team has it in this Western Conference to make a run. I think their biggest problem is their three, Harrison Barnes. Harrison Barnes at this point in his career is an NBA vet. He's a starter. He gets 30 to 35 minutes. He's going to hit a few threes. He's going to play decent defense. But I think if this team ever wants to make that push, if they ever want to go for that championship, they're going to need a three. Harrison Barnes off the bench giving you 20, 22 minutes a night would be super ideal. Imagine if this team had Mikel Bridges at the three. Now that's a serious team. Mikel locking up the best offensive player, hitting some threes, making a few shots, giving you 15 to 20 a game. That's a completely different story. Malik Monk coming off the bench, Kevin Herter hitting some threes, Trey Lyles hitting some threes, and they also need some type of backup center. JaVale McGee's old, and I mean, Alex Len, come on now. This team's good, but they're not great. That's kind of the moral of the story for this whole entire Western Conference. Next up is the Mavericks, who have actually looked a lot better as of late. This may be surprising, but the Mavericks have the ninth best defense in the league as of today. They're tied with a few teams. They're also tied for the sixth best offense. From a chemistry point of view, this team, I think, has figured something out. Getting rid of Grant Williams and getting P.J. Washington, who's a better individual defender, he's more of a, 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 an all-around offensive player. Getting Gafford for some shot blocking, some defense in the paint. Derek Lively is a good center, but he's just young, foul trouble, needs to learn certain things. Gafford's a more profound center in the league. He's played for a really trash team, but he kind of just fits this team as a lob threat, and his role makes a lot of sense. They have the star power. The chemistry looks pretty good. I don't believe in the heliocentric play style that Luka Doncic plays with. Luka Doncic, for 75 to 80% of the game, is going to be pounding the ball, bringing it up, searching for this mismatch, throwing a lob, doing this. It's a very slow-paced game. I just don't think that this equates to winning. Luka's going to pound the ball the whole entire game pretty much. Then Kyrie's going to go on his runs. He's going to go for 15 straight, and that's their offense. Regular season, it's ranked great, but in the playoffs, it's a different beast. If they're matched up with a team like the Lakers where you got AD down low, or you match with the Clippers where you, you can send three or four different wings at Luka the whole entire game, it's going to be difficult. As good as Luka has been in the second half, I do have questions about this team based off their past experiences and the playoffs and such, but I do not count this team out. I think they can make a Western Conference run. I think Luka and Kyrie could make this possible. I think it would have to be, I don't want to call it a Cinderella run, but a lot of things kind of similar to the Suns have to go well. They have a chance though, 100%. Next up's the Pelicans at the five. Top 10 offense, top 10 defense. This team honestly has it all. Bench, star power, chemistry. I like their coach. I like how they play. Like I said, offensive, defensively, they've been, they've been really good. They have been turning up very low key as of late. As long as Ingram can come back healthy, this team is a threat. And I think they are a 
big threat. Their clientele is very interesting. You know, you got like Trey Murphy, Jose Alvarado, Larry Nance, all coming off the bench. They have a very good bench, one of the best benches in the NBA, and I hold bench value very high. Zion Williamson is starting to become that player that we really wanted to see. It looks like he's dropped 25 pounds. I think that's the report. And he is looking very, very good. He's looking very, very locked in. They have a good mix of vets, middling aged guys, young players, shooting, defense. Herbert Jones might be the best versatile defender in the league. Zion might be the most unstoppable player in the league. There's a lot going on with this team. And I'm being honest, if I'm if I'm the Warriors, the Lakers, the Suns, the Kings, the Timberwolves, the Thunder, I don't want to see this team. I don't want to see this team at full health going into the first or second round of the playoffs. I don't. There's so much variance with this team. There's so much that they can do. It's just a very interesting team. I'm very high on the Pelicans. I think they can make a big run. Next up is the Clippers, and I've been very high on the Clippers for a very long time. Obviously, health is a problem. I think Kawhi Leonard is one of the best, if not the best, playoff performer I have ever seen, maybe of all time. His efficiency is through the roof, and he looks very locked in this year. They have the star power. They have the bench. They have the experience. They have the chemistry. They have it all. They got the coach. Ty Lu, one of the best coaches in the league. This is a team that you know, as of late, they've kind of taken a step back, probably ready for the playoffs at this point. If they are healthy, I think that this is the team that goes to the NBA Finals. I think they give the Nuggets the biggest problem, and I think at full health, this team will be the NBA champions this year. If that's, uh, I've, been, I've been saying it for years, but every single time the playoffs come around, something bad happens. As long as they are healthy, I think this team is just the biggest threat to the Nuggets and the biggest threat to win the NBA championship this year. All right, now we have the Timberwolves. Timberwolves have been great the whole entire season. Anthony Edwards, unbelievable offense, defense, top 10. They have a nice little bench. They have a star. They have another star in Cat. In Cat. We don't know if Cat's coming back. I don't know the reports on that. Let's say Cat is back. Let's say the team is fully healthy. The beginning of the video, I talked about good regular season teams. One of the examples was the Utah Jazz. They were a one seed, got bounced in the second. I'm not comparing this team to the Utah Jazz directly, but I'm connecting this team to the Utah Jazz directly. Teams that are versing this team, especially teams with LeBron James, high IQ players, Luka Doncic, they are going to expose that 4-5 combination of Cat and Gobert. You know what's going to happen. But on the contrary, if they verse the Nuggets, if they can make it through the playoffs at full health with Cat, Jokic just said the biggest thing or the biggest problem that he's had in the playoffs is when there's two bigs. And he had to verse the Lakers when they had um, Anthony Davis and Dwight Howard. They were just throwing bodies at him. He said that's the biggest problem. So they do that. That double center combo does have its pros and it does have its cons, but there's more teams that can expose it than I think that they could um that it works against that being said anthony edwards is an absolute dog absolute dog they got the bench they don't really have the experience though and that plays into this team a lot as much as i like anthony edwards and i like these teams that have been like shitty their whole entire existence and i want them to win i, I don't think i don't think this team has it in them i don't th i don't think they could do it with that four or five combo but we'll see. I could be wrong. And last but not least, we have the OKC Thunder, who is the biggest wild card in the West. This team has an MVP. This team has unbelievable chemistry. This team is young. This team has no experience. There's so many ifs with this team. The ifs can be in their favor. Let's look at a team like the Boston Celtics when Kyrie was there, when Kyrie was hurt, and you have a bunch of young guys, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown. They made a run. I, because their brain and their, their understanding of playoff basketball honestly just wasn't there. And as crazy as this sounds, that could be beneficial to them because they just don't understand the pressure. If they're just going out there as a unit and just hooping and just playing basketball like they have been the whole entire year, they could be a threat. But then that same strength is also their weakness. The experience isn't there. When shit gets real, is Chet Holgrim, is Jalen Williams, are these guys going to be able to step up? And now we look at their bench. When when matchups are getting a little interesting, is Case and Wallace going to check in and like make things happen? There's just so many question marks. I'm going to be rooting for them. I think they could make the Western Conference Finals, and I also think they could lose in the first round if they get the Lakers or the Warriors. There's so much variability with this team, but 
I'm ready for it. I can't wait to watch it. And I know I just said last but not least, Thunder, but there's obviously the Nuggets, but I've been using the Nuggets as the standard the whole entire video. I think it's going to be Nuggets, Clippers, in the, the Western Conference Finals. Jokic is just unbelievable. They check everything. Offense, defense, coach, star power, playoff experience. They have everything. And they have the best player in the world. So that could be that could be an art that can be a debate for a different day, but this is the team to beat. And that wraps up this video. So if you enjoyed, like I said in the beginning, leave a like, hit the subscribe button, please leave comments what you think. I'm probably gonna do the East next week. Yeah, that's that's pretty much it. I appreciate you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thank you.